Ah, yeah, here we I, go. How are you doing, my friend? I had everything set up on the cell phone. I mean, not on the cell phone, but on the computer so I could have headphones and everything. And uh, I didn't know this was the way we were going to do it on the cell phone because I've got in-ears in, but they're not connected to this for that. So I'm just hearing you through the speaker of the phone, G. Hail, everybody. It's all good. Yeah, that's great. So Sorry okay, for the you can hear me well, right? Here we are. Thanks, everybody who's on. David Shankel, glad to be here. Me and my Vipers, I'm all good. I don't know if you can see them. I'll show you my babies over here later. I had everything yeah. set up for the computer to look right at everything. I don't know why that was a problem to not come in through the computer. Yeah, I also don't know why this is a problem well, because you know uh, Instagram Lord, wasn't Lord, allowing me to buy you. That's all that matters. Oh yeah. Okay. And before we before we move on, so let's see here. We got some comments here from the audience. So let's see. Miss M Lopez is saying, Howdy bro, kisses from Vancouver. Oh wonderful. Thank you. Hail and shred on. <laughs> Thanks for yeah, having me, and, buddy. Yeah, it's an honor for us to have you here, bro. I'm Thank you so much for coming. I'm digging the band. Holly's done a great job with you. Ed's my friend, you know, tremendous bass player. You know, Joseph, great drummer. You know, Mark, you know, he, he great singer. You, you do a phenomenal job, too. So I'm just glad to help out with the recording for Ed. And, you know, and help things move along for you guys as great as we can. I take a break. I'm involved in... Right now, it'll be like 39 guest solo CDs that I'm on this, you know, in the last like six years. I got two more sent to me yesterday that I'll be doing and working on, you know, two new records this year. So a lot, a lot to talk about the best we can. That's great, bro. Thank you so much for everything. And I'm really glad you enjoyed our work with Brad Raven. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's begin with my first question. So, my first question is about your beginning of music. So, how did you start the music, bro? I started playing guitar when I was when I was like I think seven or eight years old. My father turned me on to the first Beatle records called Meet the Beatles. I was young and I'm like, you know, wow, who are these guys? This is really good. So he gave me a guitar when I was eight years old. My father was a music teacher his whole life. He played with Roy Clark, and he was on the old Hee Haw show many a times playing with Roy Clark and toured with him. So there was music in my dad his whole life, and I have two older brothers. Well, to make a long story short, when I was eight years old, he handed me a guitar. I played it for two weeks with sucks. I, I don't like it. I was a kid. So it was about, I was about ooh, 12 just about 13 years old, and it was Christmas time coming up, and my dad had already bought one on the 70s, and I'd had a national guitar with like a box in it. And I had a couple of guys in town I was just kind of jamming, learning stuff with, learning on my own. And, my, and I'll never forget this. God rest my, my mom and dad. My dad comes in and goes, do you want a really good, like, guitar and one of these Marshall half stacks for your birthday after Christmas? I, I did, or do you want to evil can evil and get a motorcycle? My mom came out of the kitchen and said, get him the guitar, he'll live longer. So my dad bought me a really nice Gibson Les Paul. I got a Marshall half stack. Uh, from that moment on, I was around 11, 12 years old. And I never put the thing down. And I practiced. I studied. I looked at every book. My dad got me into reading music at a very, very, very young age. And I was able to read music very early on. And, you know, my father was turning me on to hot country pickers, Albert Lee, Chet Atkins. Earl Travis, and I was young, and I really wasn't into that at first, but as I started to get a little older and, and really understanding guitar theory, scales, modes, chords, I started to really respect those guys, and that started me on my journey to know, okay, I, I really got a grasp on it, and I really had my father there to kind of open the door for me, so, you know, my mom and dad, I owe that to them for, you know, 
getting me into music because once I was a young 12, 13 years old, I, I never wanted to do anything else but play guitar and chase hot chicks. Yeah. And it worked. I, I think it worked out pretty good for me. <laughs> so I hope, that, nice, I, hope, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, of course it did. And also, I was thinking right now that, oh my God, you started with the best of the best. You started with a Gibson Les Paul and also a Marshall. Dude, that was the best beginning for everyone. That's really great. I remember my dad took me to an old music store that's not around anymore called Hicks Music. It was in Aurora and then in Dan's Music Store. It was Dan's Music Store in Chicago. And my good friend Tommy Holland was there. That Michael Angel baby. All of us played on each other's records. I played in Holland. He was in Holland. I did Manowar for 10 years. Michael's in Manowar now. We played on each other's uh, records and stuff. My dad took me there to buy me my first Marshall Hampstead. I, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I walked in there, and Tommy was in there, just happened to be there. Had a, a low and brown beer in his jacket. He's, like, giving some to me. I'm a teenager. I'm not like going to get me an overdrive pedal, a 50-watt Marshall head with a preamp and a cabinet, and Tommy's like, dude, you're already shredding. You're just 13 years old. You're going to have a half stick. Oh, my God, I drove the neighbors crazy. But that was my beginning to not know it later in life that I would end up in Manowar being the Guinness Book of World Records as the loudest guitarist in the world in the in the European version they've had, and that record has still not been broken. It's like 29.5 without the PA, just my cabinets, and the band has set the record again, but nobody to this date has beaten just my amp record. Now, I couldn't walk out in my backyard and get 10 cents for that, but to the people that are into metal, shred guitar, whether you like Man of War or not, makes no difference, okay? People have their opinions, but I was in that band and did that world record, me and Rhino, was just tremendous, you know, it was pretty cool for those of us that care and are in that. It's not for everybody, you know, so it is what it is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, what was that? The loudest band? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. That's really great. Yeah. And before my next question, okay. let's see. Wow, many people got in. Let's see who else. Okay. Hello, David from Lima, Peru, RC Individual, ARC. Hello. Thank you for being here, everybody. G's been doing this Crash TV. He's been doing a great job, and it took a little while to get me on, but I'm here to talk about you know, all the different projects I'm in for those that care to hear. If you don't, then why are you here? <laughs> okay, you don't belong yeah. here if you don't want to hear. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Yeah. Let's see who else. Oh, my God. Red Raven. My mates from Red Raven. How you doing, my friends? Hey, Holly. Hello. Hello. The bad Red Raven Japan fan. Red fan Raven. Japan is me. Okay. Wait a minute. I have to say to Holly, the Shred Queen. I nicknamed her Shred Queen. That's my nickname for Holly. And if she's watching, she knows that. Holly... My friend. So she's been doing a great job with you guys. She's learning things as she goes, and I'm proud of her. And you know, and I hope you know, you know, very good and great things come for you guys because it's it's not only what you put into it is what you get out of it, but that is a damn big part of it. <laughs> okay, trust me, I know. Oh uh, yeah, and we have a message here from my friend Konami from Japan. So she said, "Nice to meet you, David San." Okay, nice to meet you too. Share a photo. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Konnichiwa, my good friend Kanami. Origato Saimas. That's great. Okay. Now my second question. Dory Monogato, so, right? <laughs> Dory oh, Monogato. Oh, sorry. Right? Right? Something like that. Dory Monogato, something like that. Whatever, it's all good. I'm good. I'll tell you who can speak oh, a lot yeah. of languages. That was very impressive. I have to give Joey from Man of War. He can speak like three different languages and very well. So he, he's learned a lot being on the road. And when I came into that band, you know, he did. That was always impressed by that, that he could speak like three different languages. And he would do them very well. So, you know, now that you, you spoke that, it kind of just 
reminded me of that. But it's all good. Move on. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, Stoner Pokemon, my dear friend Onyx. So, second question now about your band Fenor. So, recently you've released with Fenor the album Power of the Chosen One. So, was the concept of this album based on the book Cimmerillion from Tolkien? This album here, Power of the Chosen One, that we did right during the beginning of the time that COVID started, just so everybody could see. Okay, Power of the Chosen One. Can everybody see that? I'm trying to get it in on my phone here. Actually, Gus came up with the concept for the cover. Because just like the last DSG record, Still a Warrior, which is one of my other bands, that was based on me still being a warrior after the war, meaning man of war. And Joey had his hands involved with me. Even though I got out of man of war, Joey and I and Eric were still brothers of metal. The Ashes to Ashes CD and Hellborn were all through Magic Circle Music. And those bands went over there to do the Magic Circle Fest in 2007. And I have the videos, Asylum God and Bleeding Out. So Joey and I and Eric, even though we weren't in a band, we were on opposite sides of the fence, we were still brothers. And we put two records out on that label through Nuclear Blast. When it came time to do the third record, that went on to a different record label, Pure Steel Records. When I came to meet Fionor, it was on their record, We Are Heavy Metal, and me, Ross the Boss, who I came in after Man of War, Tony Martin, that sang on, sang on many Black Sabbath records, and um, one of the drummer that was in Riot, we did some guest songs on there, solos and stuff. So Gus, Gus actually came up with the idea and said, let's do a tour, Dave, and bring you over and do just the Triumph of Steel record. We did that. The singer, Sven Dionis, couldn't make it, so we brought a different singer in Lobo, played all over Argentina and Brazil, crushed it. When I came back, we decided, well, we had such a great time, they wanted me to join the band, so I joined. While I joined the band, we said, let's start working on a record while we were planning another tour. Well, Gus came up with the idea of this album cover that he wanted it to be me, to be the power of the chosen one that he picked because he was so happy that we became friends. He's been a huge Man of War fan, and Gus and I, when we met, we were like brothers of steel immediately, and Emiliano, Walter, Spendianis, Andy that works with the band, everybody that's involved, My manager, John Pettigrass, who's been with me since the day I stepped in Man of War into now, love him to death. And he came up with the cover to say, that's going to be you. And I'm like, that guy's a lot bigger than me. <laughs> okay. But he wanted it to be like the power of the chosen one and, you know, rise of the dragon on my way of coming back in, in the true metal progressive power metal for that track I wrote for the first record. You know, to just because I do a lot of songs about dragons, and that's how the theme of this came, and the Odyssey, and, you know, the song of the chosen one. It all has a reason behind that and my bond through Man of War and Gus and him being a fan. And just in case people don't know, this is on Massacre Records. It's doing very well for us. We have the official video, Rise of the Dragon, and Power of the Chosen One. And, um, Also, this was released as a vinyl on Metal Warrior Records. So they made 300 copies, and it's got two different colors. I don't have a vinyl with me. It's at my sister's because she's having it framed. God bless her for that. But it's on vinyl, and you can go to Metal Warrior Records, and you can buy the vinyl that also has the EP Boundless I Am Free, which has got raw a song, and Deanna, a girl that does orchestral and strings with me in Fionor, she has a band over in South Korea, beautiful woman, dear friend, and she does a lot of violin stuff on the EP, and she's going to be doing stuff that I'm already composing with the band, and there's some new blood that's coming soon that has been brought into Fionor that I cannot mention yet that is going to put, I brought him in, and is going to put fire and more... Just, oh, true metal. Everybody's so excited. The new record's going to be tremendous because when you've done this, this is the platform. I know where to take the band to the next level. So that's what we're working on, and it's out in vinyl, 
if anybody's interested. You can get this through Massacre Records and Mario from Metal Warriors put it out on vinyl. They kind of work together, and we thank you for that. And the new record is already in the works, and it's going to fucking kick and crush the foundation you stand on, brother. There is no hold bars on this thing. It's everything in. Yes. So yeah. I hope that explains that. Yeah, sure it does. So I can say that many people are really excited for you to come to Brazil with Pinar and to yes. other countries as well, but I think especially Brazil. Yes, I've been there one time when we did the first it's with Theodore. It's funny because when I was in Manowar, we never went to Brazil. We went to China twice and never made it to South America. Now, since I've been out of the band and Carl came in, you know, they did finally make it to Brazil. But, you know, where they're going now, whatever, they're out on tour, and that's all great. And people have many different opinions of what this version of Manowar sounds like now compared to when me and Ross did it. And I love Michael. We're good friends. We played on each other's records. It's just, I'm proud to say that at least after me, where I moved on to many other things, graduated from Roosevelt University with my degree in jazz, classical guitar, music theory. I did it for me, my mom and dad. That Ross the Boss and myself, David Shankel, no matter who plays in that band, no matter what, nine different drummers, 40 different road crew guys, and five different guitar players, I can say this, and this is no offense to anybody, Ross and I have cemented our name the history books of Manowar in the early days of that band and those videos are out there for people to see. The Triumph of Steel, Joey and I co-wrote. The first song I brought to that band was Ride the Dragon. When that Triumph of Steel record came out, and I wear it probably on my shoulder, but I moved on. And I love everybody in that band. Okay? Was the first album, the first week it came out to this date, no matter who's in the band and Carl and anybody that does their records, that was in the top ten in Germany, the first movie came out, and it's the first Man of War record, yes, the Triumph of Steel, to this fucking date right now, to go gold and platinum in Germany over any other Man of War record. And I love all the Man of War records. Ross and I are best friends. My manager, Johnny, handles him, and we, we hang out when we can be together, and Ross did what he did. When I came in, I brought my own shoes to the band. I didn't fill anybody's shoes. I brought my own shoes to the band. And Triumph of Steel, that's not even my best playing. I played what Joey and them wanted. But when I got out of that band, if you listen to Ashes to Ashes, Hellborn and Still a Warrior, you see what I was made of. And Joey wanted a piece of that. And that's why those records show what I'm really all about. I was paid to do what Joey wanted to do in that band and crushed it live. And we loved it. But that was not my, my best playing, but I was proud of it. And when it came time to exit, State Brothers of Truth, and I showed people what I could really do with my DSG stuff, and I've just been going up ever since. And I love them, and I wanted to say that to all my fans. Thank you. Yeah, that's really yeah. incredible. And it now, is, man. Speak, speaking of Manowar, so about a time of Manowar, which was your biggest challenge during a tour with them? I would say when we first got together, and they flew me over to New York. I was, you know, I was a little green. I'd never been in a touring band before. And learning this, I learned the songs at home. I, there was like 20-something songs. I stayed up like a day and a half and learned them. And then Joey's like, you know, like you would with anybody. Gee, I'm sure you as a, as a hot guitar player, you know what I'm about to say. You learn the basic melodies that really stick out in the solo. And then you put your own icing on the cake and your own stamp. Well, that's what I did. And that's what Joey wanted me to do. And I was on fire. If you look at the videos that are up there when I'm in that brown outfit they had made for me, my hair was back in the early 80s, a little permy and whatever. I was 27 years old and I was crushing it, you know, and those are great memories for me. I think the biggest challenge was was just getting used to being in the band and how I needed to work around everybody and how they worked on stage and then on the bus, off the bus, a hotel, it was a blast and learning how to really talk 
in interviews back then and just finding my comfort zone, which luckily I found very quickly. And that's what really made Joey and I and Eric and Scott Columbus, God rest his soul, you know, bond together and took directions from these guys. And because they were signing the checks, but we were brothers of metal. And I was getting older and learning and doing my thing. And uh, that came very quickly and playing the big arenas. I remember the first time I flew overseas to tour with Manowar, we flew into was Oslo. We played in Oslo and Zach Wild was there, the bass player from Accept because they were doing something, Billy Sheen, and they were way up in the balcony and I got to meet them backstage. This is my first freaking show with Man Overseas. And Zach Wild was just as tall as a giant the nice guy. And he goes, dude, how do you play so friggin' fast through all those marshals with no delay, no chorus, no nothing? I said, brother, I plugged right in. Doc Stillwell that designed all the marshals and Hot Rod, he's no longer with us, God rest his soul. He goes, you play so fast, how can they even record you? I said, I just do what I need to do. And I, you know, and I learned playing with those amps, there was no, no noise gates. You play, turn that volume down. When you got 25 marshal cabinets behind you, five heads that are 100 watts completely modified, and four Crest audio power amps that are 4,000 watts apiece, you better learn how to com how to command and handle that weapon in your hand because there's no noise gate to rely on or nothing, no overdrive pedal. We plugged in like men. There was no wireless. I have like a, depending on the size of the place we played, like a 30 to 50 foot or 75 foot guitar cable custom made because that's how Man of War rolled, brother. That's how it went. A lot of people don't know that. But that's the truth. That's yeah. the truth, man. That is the truth. Well, so, oh, what a hell uh, of an experience. <laughs> yeah. You know, there was a lot of great times. You know, everything isn't always bed and roses and stuff. Difficult times. Thing on a tour bus, if one person gets sick, if you don't have enough medicine, everybody gets sick. You know, we can't, you don't want that, but that's just all part of touring, man. When you're out there for three months at a time, something's bound to go wrong, unfortunately. So there you go. Yeah, that's that's really great. So uh, before my next question, so let's see here. Who else get in? Let's see here. Ah, Red Raven says, Joseph sent his greetings. He's at work. Hey, Joseph. Hello, Joseph. My, my you're the man. We, we love you. Thank you for saying hello. Sorry, you can't stay on. Tremendous. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. And also, let's see here, our friend from Japan, Lee, and also later from our fan club from Japan, said, "I followed you on Instagram, David San." Okay. Thank you, David San. I appreciate that. Also, I want to mention, if we can, in case it doesn't get brought up, that if people like barbecuing and stuff i have my own line of hot sauce okay oh, this is oh, this is this is the david shankel we did this for halloween it's a company called hellfire hot sauce out of lake geneva here for halloween they put the wax over it put one of my guitar picks on there and this is full shred if everybody can see it and I met them when I was doing some shows with Queens Ride Docking and Sebastian Bach in a band called Veilside, which is my buddy Tony Angle, who is the singer on the Grave Rain Destination Aftermath CD, which we'll talk about that because we're already working on a new record and we start rehearsals at the end of March going into April. A lot of plans for that band. But this is the mild sauce, the, the full shred, and it's very, you know, tomato peppers, very sweet. Not too much to blow your mouth out. And then the full shred, or the shred demon, if they, I'm trying to keep it as still as I can. You know, for a Halloween thing, this one is the way hotter one. If you like super hot sauce, I'm not saying it was maybe the hottest in the world, but it's got ghost peppers and all that. But a lot of flavor, because if I'm going to do hot sauce, G, I like to, be able to still taste my food, if I can, without my mouth being a volcano. So this is the one. This is a really hot one, and we're doing a third one that's going to be in the middle, and we're calling it Soul Stealer. Just so everybody knows, that'll be coming out. So I'm letting that out of the bag, just so everybody knows. So I wanted. To 
to get that in, you know, and I got my and it's still, I didn't know nothing about hot sauce tea when it started, but I learned. I learned from these people in my managers like you should do it. I'm like, hot sauce? I've got guitar endorsements, EMG pickups, Taylor Trimolo, my own shred bar from Taylor. You know, I'm a fractal audio guy, been with them almost 14 years. It'll be on my birthday in March. I'm like, what the hell do I know about hot sauce except it'll blow your mouth out? Well, I got together with uh, the people that own the company, Merle, Indiana. It's wonderful. They've done a great job. And uh, check them out, hellfirehotsauce.com. You know, they've got all kinds of different hot sauce. They did for the movie Hellboy. You can get mine through there, or you can get my hot sauce directly through graverainband.com. You can get the hot sauce through there and find out all the news about um, Grave Rain. You can get Fionor CDs through there, personally signed from me to you, and find out what's going to be happening with Grave Rain, and go to uh, FionorBand.com. That's our website, and you know, G, all the social media, we always put out what's coming up when it comes out. That's just standard protocol, brother. There you go. Yeah. So, can I say about your hot sauce in Portuguese for people from Brazil? Maybe I think someone would, would like to get it. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, they're working on, I know the company is trying to have some dealers that he deals with over in Italy, Argentina, so I don't know if that's been locked in the bag, but if somebody goes to HellfireHotSauce.com and you order it, they're going to send it to you. They will send it to you. It may take a little while, but, but they'll send it to you, and it's all good. I also... I want to thank them, and I want to thank somebody else new in my life, if you don't mind, that has become a brother to me. That's Phil Simon, who is doing all my photo editing, all my videos lately, all the Photoshop stuff. He's a true brother of metal. He's known me since back in the Man War days. Phil and Maria from the House of Metal, the guys have been tremendous. We have a wonderful bond, and if you're watching, I love you both, and thank you for being there for me. Really, thank you. I appreciate it. I love you guys. Thanks for helping me out. Yeah. Yeah, that's really incredible. I'm all, I'm all about thanking people, man, that help you, you know, because everybody needs help from somebody. Oh, for sure. Sure, uh -huh. that's really true. And now, I would like to ask you about um, your one of your studies that you that you composed, and it's about your study in A major that you do with a it's like a, with a with a classical guitar it's... stuff. So, about your study, so do you teach the song to your students using a score, or do you usually make them learn by ear? I have been teaching for 35 years. I studied with the great Paul Henry, who studied with Christopher Parkening, and Christopher Parkening was able to spend some time with Segovia. You know, the master. Yeah, he was the king. Still is, as far as I'm concerned. And um, when depending on the level of the student, you know, I have many students from many different styles of music. We run a music school. We have students that are eight years old that she does group beginner guitar lessons with, piano vocals, and I do intermediate beginner master classes for classical guitar, jazz, rock, shred, bass, acoustic guitar. I got girls I teach, believe it or not, just want to learn Taylor Swift. I got guys I teach that just want to learn Will Hager, but I got a lot of students that are shredders. And depending on when it comes to classical guitar, we have the book I have them get for the 120 right hand studies of arpeggios, and I pick the pieces for them that are at their level G. So you're not trying to bite off more than you can chew, and we have it in regular music staff. And these days, you know, from my days back in college, Tablature was just starting to get known. Now, Tablature, you can pull up guitartab.com and find anything in the world that's got Tablature. You know, that's a good thing, but the problem with that as a guitar teacher or music teacher, people don't want to take the time to learn music anymore. They don't want to learn to read it. They're like, well, just give me the Tablature. This is zero, second figure here. But you know what? You got a lot of people that are family, they got kids. They work a job. They want to play guitar for fun, roast marshmallows, or play in a karaoke band or a copy band. Nothing wrong with that. It's all entertainment. They don't want to learn major, you know, major scales and how to read that on paper 
and circles of it. Some of them are like, just teach me this song, and I'm happy. And everybody's different. And to be a great teacher, and I've been doing it a long time, you have to get into their mind, cut the fat away from the meat, understand what they want to learn, get them to trust you, and get them on the journey to the right path that's good for that student. And I have been doing it professionally for 35 years. There's a million great guitar players out there that don't want to teach and can't teach. And then there's great guitar players that can do what we do, but also knows how to sit down and check all that at the door and teach a 12-year-old kid how to play chords and picking and finger style and what pentatonics are and how those work and learn hot blues riffs out of them from some of your favorite guitar players and how to make it make sense to them so they understand and they, they want to keep coming back because they're getting what they want. And that's what I do really well. That's wonderful, bro. And also, if someone wants to to have you as a teacher so if someone wants to have guitar lessons with you how people need to do to have you as a teacher Tell it's us. very simple <clears throat> you need to buy every dsg record theodore wings and destiny great brain and pre-order the grave the uh, uh, um, red raven cd go watch all their videos and then show me photos that you did that and they have to, to text holly my shred queen, that they did before I'll even talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one. That's a good one. How about I that? Totally agree. How about that? I mean, people got to step up and show they want to help us out here, brother. You know, we do not take any freeloaders. You know, whips and poses leave the hall. If you're a freeloader, don't even talk to me, man. Okay? I, I got no time for you. All kidding aside. Okay? You, <laughs> I thought it's a good one. You can reach me through my social media. If anybody is really interested in lessons, I've got four personal Facebook pages, Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube. Best way to reach me, and you don't have to be friends with somebody to send them a message, is come to my main David Shankle Facebook page. Not David Shankle 2, David Shankle 3 or 4, because I use those to spread more. Because you get so many people to be friends, this whole bullshit with 5,000 friends, they need to lift that and all these new rules with Facebook, you know, come on. You know, and you can have a fan page, which I have, that for Grave Rain, DSG, a personal fan page, and stuff like that. You can have hundreds of thousands of likes. But I really respond a lot to people that come to my David Shankel main Facebook, because that's where I, I, I get my messages. People come to me if they're interested in lessons. You can contact me there, and I will get back to you. You can contact us through GraveRainBand.com, where you can ask questions about lessons for me and Tony, and order uh, Failside CDs, T-shirts, Hot Sauce, Theodore CD, Grave Rain CD, Destination Aftermath, and anything else we got on there, and learn about lessons, and there's links to all our social media pages. So that's it. Also... We run the Milwaukee Music Academy, me and my lady, Annette, and you go there and you can put in, I would request to talk with Dave Shankle on guitar lessons. That's just another way you can get all of us. But a lot of people come to me personally and, uh, you know, that helps, you know, whatever way if that works out for you. But they have to watch all yeah. the videos and, and buy the CDs and pre-order Red Raven or I will not talk to you. <laughs> I really enjoyed this idea, bro. That was wonderful. Did you like that, Holly, my shred queen? I'm looking right at you, baby. <laughs> She's probably dying right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. For sure she is. <laughs> yeah. I, I love oh, her. Yeah. She, she's a gem. It's all good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, and I think my friend, Marcia... Oh, Go sorry. ahead. I, I think my friend, Marcia Lopez, from... Uh, now she's leaving Canada. She loved it because she's really, really clapping a lot, and she's okay. learning a lot from Revuelta Cultural. Okay. Good, good. To see you, Marcia. <laughs> see, it just goes to show you, it's not all about me. I love everybody. There's a saying, real quick. I want to add this in since I brought you guys into this. When I was in Manowar, Joey and I had a saying that we came up with. And back then, there was more added to it, but I'll leave that out. Just
this because I should, is that if you've never seen the band before, and this was in Man of War, and I said this with DSG, Brave Raven, Fever, Devil, and when I did that band, all that is just saying, and this is no insult, but it's pretty funny. If you've never seen me play or the band before, whichever band it is, come see the band. If you like us, you know, go over there, buy a CD, get a T-shirt, you know, go like our band page. If you don't, then don't come again. I don't care. i got enough people that will come and see us. If you don't like what we do, go away. we got enough people that will see us. You know, there you go. It's as simple as that. If you love what we do, wonderful. We welcome to have you. I never live my life around haters. I always the people that you want to embrace and be happy with. You only live once, man, and you can't let people drag you into their ridiculous snake pit because then they'll be, oh, I got him. I got him. I got this guy or that guy. It ain't worth it. Those people are beneath you, and it doesn't matter whether they're jealous, this or that, or you bang their girlfriend. Who, who friggin' knows? Who cares, man? It is what it is. You know, and back in the day, I did a lot of that. So it is what it is. Moving on. <laughs> Jude, I'm loving. The, I'm loving this interview. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Praise Jesus. <laughs> I'm just a tool in his yeah. hand. I'm a tool in his hand that he guided me to help these women to learn the way of glory and joy down the path of happiness. Who am I to argue with the Lord as he picked me amongst many other people? So I am not here to argue with him. I'm just his tool. <laughs> yeah, okay, motherfucker. <laughs> Come on, you gotta have a little humor. Gotta have some humor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we surely do. And now... Talking about humor, now we're going to enter into our next block called If You. And in this block, I got nine questions, and all okay. of them starts with If You. And we're going to imagine some situations, and you're going to tell me what would you do if you were inside of the situation. So okay. we got nine options. So One, two, this three, is like four, a five, game six, show seven, now. Nine. So it's like a game show. Yes. Okay. Almost wow. like. This. Okay. Should, so, uh, should I get a shield to protect myself? <laughs> All right, buddy. Actually, this is this is um like um this is a survival test. Oh, okay. All right. Throw it at me one at a time. All right. So you need to choose a number first. You need to choose three, but choose the first one. And your options are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Let's Come just on. start with one and work our way up to nine, brother. No need to jump around. You throw them at me, and I'll excuse me, roll them out. Okay. Okay. So question number one: If you could choose a musician to compose a song with you, which musician would you choose? That would be Bjorn from ABBA, the greatest guitarist that has ever walked on this planet. No, I'm just kidding. If I could, and I love ABBA, they sold more records than anybody, so you can't knock them. If I could choose a musician to compose a song with, who would that be? Well, I like a lot of singers, but that and a, and a lot of bands, but you said musician, not band, right? Of musician. Yeah, that's a musician. Okay. I would have to say it would have to be in the world of singers, but you know, you're talking from metal to rock to that. I would say yeah. if I could have the chance to really sit down, there's a couple of them. I would love to do something with David Coverdale, Steve Perry from Journey, and I would love to have done something with I like one of my favorite singers, two more guys, Tony Hornell from TNT and Mike Facera. There you go. Wonderful. Great if, choices. If I could and pick, before, and I know Tony Hornell, we're friends, and we have many pictures together, and I've never met Mike Becerra, but we've talked and chatted, and he's good friends with Anton, who's my singer in Wings of Destiny. So that day will probably come. These are singers that I like, that if I could pick them, it would be every one of them to write a song with. That's the best answer I could give you. Great, and okay. it was really great answer. And before we move to the next question, so uh, you told about ABBA, and I was remembering some, something really fun about the song, The Winner Takes It All. Do you remember the song, right? Yes, yes, yes. 
When are Jake's at all? Remember the part that the singer says, Building me a home, be thinking I'll be strong there. But I was a fool. This part, this phrase, but I was a fool. Here in Brazil, it sounds like us, a phrase, like a phrase in Portuguese, like, vai lavar seu cu, and translating is, go to wash up your ass. And we oh laugh a lot my all God. the time we listen to it. Okay. Because <laughs> of the accent and the language thing, that's how you kind of look at that. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. I'll have to remember that when I get over there and we can meet and do what we're going to do. That will be cool. All right, oh, that's yeah. a good one. So that's a good one. Okay. Remember the phrase, but I was a fool. But, of but course, I was a fool. We, we sing like that in Brazil. Yeah, so it's like this, like a vai lá va seu cu. Vai lá va seu cu. Yeah, up, up your ass. Okay, okay. It's, it's okay. Really People, funny. you can <laughs> see where this interview has been completely taken a turn now. Oh, God, Holly, are you still on? I don't know if she should be hearing this. Okay, you know, oh, boy, maybe she is, maybe she's not. Okay, all right, next question. <laughs> all right, so choose a number. Okay, did we do number two yet, or are we on to three? What's next? Okay, so number question, three. Question two, number three, right? Okay. Yeah, of course. The, yeah. Cho uh, you choose the number two or three now, for now. Well, we didn't do two, so let's just do two then. Right. So, okay. if you could choose a festival to play right now, which one would you choose? I would love to do Vakken. I've never been there. I would love to go to Vakken and play. I think that would be tremendous. You know, I, you know, I don't believe Manowar's never played there, but, you know... That's a whole different thing, but I mean, if I could go there and play, I think that would be something, you know, remember like Downington, Bakken, that, I, that would be my, my first thing if I could. So there you go. With Bjorn hey, from, with, G, G, with Bjorn yeah. from Emma. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right. Question three. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> All right. So. The last question from our blog, if you, so, if you could choose a band or a solo artist to go on a tour with you, which one would you pick? If I could choose a band and or a solo artist to go on the road with, well, I have three tremendous bands in Fionor, Grave Rain, Wings of Destiny, my DSC thing, but we have to exclude that from this question. I would say, God, if I had to pick a band that I could go on tour with, playing as a guitar player? No, wow. not exactly playing as a guitar player. So you're touring with your band, and oh, you need to okay. choose one band to go oh, with okay. you. To I got you. If I'm guest. touring with my band, and we could go on as an opener or a band to play along with, I would have to say if there's one band at this moment... You know, and I know these guys, they're friends of mine. It would be one of two bands, Dragon Force or Dream Theater. There you go. Take your no, friggin' pick. Ones. Herman and I and Sam are good friends. We go way back when they, they knew me and met them back in my Man War days. They have much respect for me as I do for them as well. Wow. I mm. think that would be a dream to tour with Dragon Force, especially. Oh my God! Well, I don't look at that as a dream, but that's what I would do if I could just pick what's going on, who's happening now, and to get out there. And it's kind of people I know. It kind of makes sense to do that, you know. All the guitar hero shit. Yeah, yeah. of course. Great. So. David, so that was her blog called If You, Congratulations, You Survived. I passed. Wonderful. I'm very happy. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. What's next on the chat block? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, shit. So uh, my next question now, it's about uh, are you planning a tour with one of your bands for this year? And where are you planning to tour if you have a tour scheduled? So tell us about okay. it. Let me just then kind of give you the spectrum of all three bands and kind of just shrink it in if I can. 
starting off with Theodore, we're, some new blood is in. We're bringing more new blood in. We're already writing and composing. And we're planning on, by the end of the year or sooner, releasing the next record and getting probably like we've done before, 10 to 15 dates all around Argentina. Plus, we're planning on, with some of our promoters' help that brought us there the first time, to get back over to Brazil, and we're working on getting to Germany. Okay? So that is definitely, I can say, 100% in the plans. With the new record, also to follow up, excuse me, from the mighty power of the chosen one, which is on vinyl. Do not forget that. Massacre Records, Vinyl, with um, Metal Warrior Records. That's number one. Number two, my buddies Wings of Destiny, with Anton, Andreas, and Daniel, and Horatio. I came into that band about eight, nine months ago. We've done five songs. We redid Ride the Dragon and Master of the Wind from my Triumph of Steel record. Took it to a whole new level. You can go hear it on the Wings of Destiny YouTube channel. You know, the first week it was out or so, there's like 40,000 views and stuff. That's all great and good. It's on Spotify. We have a fifth song we're about to release called Give Me Light, which is a strong power ballad. And Mike Lapod from Symphony X, the bass player, and he plays. He would play. He used to play bass with Ross the Boss, who still does. He played bass on it as a guest bass player. So that'll be released probably by the end of the month. And Anton, the singer... Andreas, the guitarist and the bass player, they're also hired guns in a band called Savage Existence, and they're getting ready to tour with Ross and some other band that's that's going on right before Ross. So they're doing that. We're going to release that single, and then when they're done with that tour, we're picking up with probably another five or six songs, no more singles, and then releasing the full Wings of Destiny record with yours truly on it. And that will take us all the way probably into the end of the year. And that record, if we're lucky at best, will come out at the end of the year or in 2024 and start touring with that. Grave Rain, this is my local band. All original, cruising, full step down tuning, seven string guitar stuff like DST with Tony Angle from Veilside. We've got two songs here that are in a movie that's coming out this year. The movie company that Tony's hooked up with to do like commercials and movie stores and stuff, we redid How Soon Is Now by Prince, which was the theme song for the TV series with Melissa Milano. So I kept it radio heavy, you know, and, and, and tuned down a full set. We took it to company. It's going to be a movie and where it's going to be played yet, but we did the song. They didn't get it, but they took it, and the movie's called, I think, Hunting Pleasantville or Pleasant Valley. Tony will kill me if I say that. That's coming out through Netflix or something, and you know, we don't know what they use. We get the rest of the pay for that. So that's one song for that. Another song we did we asked you for the same company is a remake of Floyd. We have been dead off. And at our, our number formerly of Bailside, Ron Thomas, and he did a tremendous job, and that's going to be a comedy documentary this year, like, you know, streaming channels that's on there. So we're happy about those shows being the movie Destination Aftermath with my great drummer, Gabriel Anthony, from the DSC record, Still a Warrior, and my player, Mick Lucid, who was with us with Devil Land, and there we brought them in after this was recorded, but they will be involved in the new recording of the second Grey Brain record that's coming. And later this year, I've always wanted to do this for all my fans, guitar fans, and guitar lovers. Before I die, I am going to do an instrumental record. So I'm planning on working on that with several guys that I've played on. I mean, I've been on Badio's record. He's been on mine on the Hellborn record with T.D. Clark, Joe Stump, Michelangelo Badio, then me, a track called The Voyage, Instrumental Shred Fest, and you hear us kick it off side by side. Then when I did the Warrior record, I had a track called The Hitman, with my buddy Mike McCarron that played drums, built my studio, God rest his soul. 
was TD Clark, Joe Stump, Beatty, o, Parker Lundgren from Queensryche, Roger Stauffenbach from the band Artention, Tommy Vitale, TD Clark again. They all played a solo on that. So I've got a couple of guys that I owe to to bring on one of my instrumental records and a couple of surprise singers that I really can't mention any names until it really comes time to get chiseled down. But for me, G, I want to do an instrumental record because... In the 80s and 90s, which you know, a lot of instrumental records then, everybody was all neoclassical stuff, and you heard the first two, three songs, and they blew their wad, and you knew what they were doing. With mine, you're going to go from neoclassical shred melting to massive hot country picking like Albert Lee and Danny Gatton, and then you're going to have massive classical guitar concerto pieces. Okay, so it's not just one style. I really want to try at my age and where I'm at now and all the things I've learned that I love in guitar that I like to be versatile to show people I had no idea he could do that. Well, I never knew he could do that kind of stuff. You know, I, I didn't know he could play blues like Stevie Ray Vaughan and all this stuff. You don't hear that stuff on a Man of War DSG record. But you will on the instrumental record. And for me, it will be a pinnacle to show people the well-roundedness of the many different styles I can play from Chad Eck and stuff, Merle Travis, classical, all the neoclassical stuff, hot country stuff, blues, and some really great singers and some other guitar players friends of mine that are just tremendous players. You know, if I tell you somebody's a hot player, you better believe they're a hot player, okay? So those are some of the things that I'm working on in the future, brother, as I move through this year. So that's a lot of work ahead of me around my teaching schedule, another bottle of hot sauce, and, uh, you know, recording Ed when he's ready to do more bass tracks for Red Raven, you know, for and Holly, you know, my shred queen, okay? And, uh, and just trying to keep keep my music going for what I love to do. You know, it's something else, G. You know, not speaking for you or anybody else, but for me, I, I just don't do music to hope it sells or somebody's going to buy it and I'm going to go on the door for six months. I play music because I love to play. I love to teach. I didn't have a teacher when I was young to sit me down and cut the fat off the meat and learn it the right way. I used to move the needle on the record study and everything Yuli Roth did. By the time I was 15 years old, I already knew all this Paul Gilbert, Jason Becker stuff, and I loved their playing, you know. But I do it because I love to teach. I love to help people take the stress out of their life, make it easier for them because I didn't have it then. You know, one of my favorite guitar players, when I was in Steve Van Halen, love Eddie Van Halen. I was more of a Vi guy. One of my guys, Howard Anderson, turned me onto this album cover, and it was some guy dressed up in a suit with the jacket off, holding a black Les Paul with a gypsy dancer behind him in a dress, and I went, who's this bum? Well, you know who that was? Al Demiola, and the album was called Elegant Gypsy. I put that record on, and I went, I take that back. Oh, my God, this guy is tremendous. And I was like 14, 15 years old, and I was really hearing the double picking. Completely was a turning point for me when I heard that album, Elegant Gypsy. He was one of the guys that was an influence. Steve Vai, of course, Eddie Van Halen. But I really liked the augmented style. Uli John Roth, you know, of course, I love the Friedman Becker stuff when they did their concophony style stuff. Another great guitar player when I was very young I got to see that I loved was Frank Marino from A Hongany Rush. There's another phenomenal guitar player, man. You know, Michael Shanker. These are some of the guys I grew up liking. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. And then, you know, my dad got me into classical guitar. You know, the Chad Atkins, Merle Travis, you know, that kind of stuff. And then I heard of Christopher Parkin and really started studying music and going to college. Because there was stuff I could play, but I didn't, when I was really young, I didn't know what it was. I didn't, you know, understand. When I was first learning, I was like, well, what's, what do you mean a harmonic minor? I was 12 years old. Well, I wanted to know what that stuff was. And my dad helped me. I bought every book there was. Like every other guitar player, I went and rented every beat up Star Licks tape, Hot Licks video, and learned what you can from some. But I folded everything 
my own style and went to college and study and I never was a guy to copy anybody I just would learn and admire what certain other guys did because we all learn from each other it's how you play it your feel what comes from your heart your amp your strings the kind of music you play that's really what makes you be who you are when you heard Van Halen play without looking at him you know it's him when you hear Uli John Roth you know it's him when you hear Michael Shankel, you know it's him. So you, when you hear these guys, they have a style. And that's, I think, probably the hardest thing is to get good enough to, to kind of, when people hear you, they know right who you are. And I worked hard to get that. And my tone, my playing, my sound, my rhythms, and all my records, it's, it's been a style shaping for me. And I, I'm glad that some people, let's say, think I have my own style. I'm not here to pat myself on the back. I let the fans do that. I'm glad to be alive and be there for them. And I thank you all. So that's my humble opinion. There you go. That's really great. Oh, yeah. So now, unfortunately, we are in the end of our interview. So I would like to say thank you very much, you, David, and all of you who were watching us live. Thank you so much. Muito obrigado, galera do Brasil. I want to say thank you. I just wanted to do this. Here's my DS8 from Viper, Jeff Heitman. The calling. Look at all that out there. Like a regular guy. And we get the David Shank red bar. And that way, so you can get all the way. That's my eight string, so nothing's hitting the thin. And uh, we've sold a couple already, so that's the DS8. It's a coral battleship paint job. And I wanted to show this for you. This is the first DS6. Taylor again, 381, SA85. It had a super cutaway. I could stab you to death with this friggin' thing, man. So we've sold some of these. And the Dragon guitar is in the shop, just getting an extra little few touch-ups. And that'll be coming out. And you can get these guitars, which already and I appreciate that you can contact me or Jeff Heitman at viperguitars.com there's plenty other artists that are on there but Jeff and I sat down with my design and his, his and nobody else on there or anywhere else has that neck joint design so you can slide up and it feels gee, like a neck through the body when you slide up one of these days we'll be together and you can play these and check them out but if anybody's interested great if you're not, they're made for me. Viperguitars.com, Jeff Heitman. You can get all three of them up there for a custom order. And I want to say thank you for having me on here. Thanks to everybody for coming on and being a part of this, G. This really meant a lot, and, and, and I really thank you. And now, I just want to say, all of these, if this can be sent over, like if it's video, that would be great, and I can put it on my YouTube channel so people can watch it at any time they want. If this is bigger than too big, we'll figure out how you can get it to me, and maybe you can see this reposted again for those that missed it. Okay? Hail and shred on and be watching for new Grey Brain CD, Grey Brain playing out with me and Tony, a new Fiendor record with two new tremendous members I brought into the band, DSG and some more music coming from Wings of Destiny and more new signature guitars and check out Red Raven okay they kick ass they rock all of them in the band are great people down to earth Holly my shred queen check these guys out they're great and we're all going to meet one day I love you all thank you very much thank you so much David so I would like to say thank you everyone again and Revuelta Cultural, obrigado, thank you for doing this. Muchas gracias, uh, mi hermanita de, de, de Canada. And also Wolfgang Paul said, what's up, Dave? Hey, Wolfgang, how you doing? Happy birthday again to you, buddy. He's a great drummer. He's, I think he just turned 18. Oh, my God, the guy's like a young Neil Peart. Shut up. We will get together and talk, Wolf. Okay, it's long away, buddy. Yeah, happy birthday, Wolfgang. Thank you so much for coming, bro. So, that's it, my friends. Thank you so much. Muchísimo obrigado a todos, galera, pela presença. Esse foi David Schenkel, Is Man of War, e atual Grave Rhyme, e também Wings of Destiny, e muito projeto bacana aí, que a gente já até falou sobre aqui. E muitíssimo obrigado a todos mais uma vez. Fiquem ligados, porque semana que vem tem mais. So, Dave, 
Thank you once again. See you around, bro. Thank you, brother. And Thank you, man. Rocky. Love you all. Hail and shred on.